we weren't able to go through the whole length of the talk because I was so slow or probably because it was very long. So we're gonna do it right now and right here. If you want to know more about the wonderful world of TypeScript types, please look at this. Enums. Enums was something that we jumped off the talk because you're not that interesting, but now that we have more time, we may want to talk about enums now. Boom. Enums are a great way to represent a limited number of content values that are related to each other in some way. For instance, HJKL. <laughs> this is a big joke. Not laughing? Okay. Direction up, down, left, and right. And you can use it like any other type. So we say that we have a, clap, a crab, and then we want to move it in a direction. We could use that enum to represent that direction. So we can do crab.move direction down. Cool fact. <coughs> cool fact about uh, enums, you can also use them as literal types. So we cannot, we don't need to use only direction, we can use also direction up to use the literal type enum direction up. So in this case, now we would only ever be able to use the type because otherwise we get a type error. Enums can be numbers like this, but it can also be strings like this. Like classes, Enums are both values and types. This is one of the two things that can be both uh, in TypeScript. So we have one hand classes and now we have enums. And this is how it looks. Here we have the enum direction. In the world of types, we use enums for type checking to ensure that something has the type enum. In the world of values, we use them at runtime to, for instance, display something in the user interface. So if you only want to ever use enums as types, consider using literal unions instead. Literal unions are only available in the world of types and they are completely removed in runtime. And so are const enums. So if you use a const enum, the type itself will be removed at runtime and things will be inlined. Any. We've already talked about any, so we're going to just jump ahead to the next section. The any part was super rushed, but we shall say we go bam bam bam, gradle types is fine. Oh, any, 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 crazy, 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 any. Ooh, this was a good image. I'm gonna stay here for a moment. The more you type, the more type definitions you use, the stronger TypeScript becomes. Continue, ping, 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 no implicit any, yeah, important. Use is, use is, use is, use is, beep, 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 Bam. Type refinement, super important. I'm gonna jump over it because we already talked about it. Here we are. This is the next section that we didn't talk about. Null, undefined, void, and never. So null. Null is often referred to as a billion dollar mistake. Why? We shall see with this example. Here we have a function attack where you attack a target. Destroy all thy enemies. But no, because we're actually in a love mood. We're gonna hack instead. And increase people's happiness. So hack. We hack a target. But for some reason, we get a target from somewhere and it's very unsafe and they give us an undefined or a null. So when we call hack on the target on JavaScript, nothing is preventing us from doing that. Boom, we get a runtime error. Something that may happen right now or may, may happen uh, when we get to production after a long while, which becomes harder to fix. Okay, so that was the culprit. We're trying to access a property on an undefined um, object and therefore we get that error. So that's null. That's that's why null and undefined are horrible. This is the billion dollar mistake. It's a ticking bomb waiting to explode. Whenever you have undefined in your code running rampant, it can explode at any time. Anytime that somebody tries to do something with a null, things will explode. So JavaScript has two, not one, but two ways to represent absence of value have two different brands of null. And they're null and undefined. Yeah, JavaScript, fuck life. So yeah, normally we use null to represent the absence of value, like uh, in code actively, a code author would use that. And undefined is something that hasn't been defined yet, but both of these are just conventions. So where undefined is evil, but kind of cute, Null is 
super scary. Okay, why? And I'm gonna show you. Why no is a lot horrible than undefined. So here we have Jamie, and Jamie is sad. Because happiness is one, Jamie is very sad. And I'm not handsome when I'm sad. Now we're gonna hack our hack method, or function, so that any misplaced hacks belong to me. So I will, whenever you go, ha whenever you go hack with undefined, I'm gonna be hacked myself. And I wanna be happier, happier forever. So if the bad target is undefined, the default, JavaScript default kicks in, and I become a thousand plus happy. That's a lot of pluses. But if the target is null, whoa, what happens now? Boom, danger, because null, this is crazy. We get a null reference exception. But wasn't I using that default? How is this possible? Boom. The reason for this is that null bypasses the faults. How crazy is that? Okay, can, times, can uh, TypeScript help us here? We shall see. So TypeScript doesn't have two ways to represent absence of value. It has actually four. Null and define void and never. Yeah. TypeScript is even cooler because it has double. But there's a very significant difference. And the difference is that null in TypeScript is also a type. And using an additional strict check, so we already talked about how to you need to make your application stricter, how using strict mode can help you nudge, nudge, nudge you towards type safety and uh, a more uh, safe uh, application. So a strict mode checks is yet another way in which you can make your application more safe. And what this does is that by default, every type that you have includes null or undefined. But when you enable strict null checks, what happens is that these two values, null and undefined, are not in the domain of every type. So this is a fancy way of saying this. So we have this type dog, which is um, an object that has a bark method. If we don't enable a strict null checks, every one that we every place, every every time that we refer to dog, we're actually referring to dog or undefined or null. If we enable strict null checks, whenever we define to dog, we're only referring to dog, and null and undefined are never, never allowed. So now we use TypeScript, we get this hack method, and now we're gonna make it more type safe. And what we do is that we assign this variable, um, this type target, so that whenever anybody tries to assign undefined or null, because there was some mistake someplace else in the code, for some other reason, you get an undefined or null, you try to call this, call this hack method with that undefined or null, and what happens is that the compiler is gonna tell you no way, and you cannot call this method with that null or undefined. This happens as soon as you type in that code, you're gonna get the error message, so you will ensure that we'll never this will never reach production. Boom, and as a result, TypeScript helps you prevent null reference exceptions if you use it right. And this is me, been mind blown. So null as a type gives you a way to systematically remove null from your code base. Uh, and TypeScript, there's some times that you may have a uh, reasonable reason to work, work with null undefined sometimes. I, I just try to keep it constrained. If, if I need to use it for some reason, I try to keep it constrained so it doesn't propagate throughout the code base. Um, but sometimes you may need to deal with it because it comes from other third-party APIs or for different reasons, like as a code. But in that case, TypeScript simplifies working with null and define with these two new features that are part of the ECMA standard. One of them is optional chaining. So in this case, we're trying to call slash on a sword on a warrior, but we don't know whether warrior and sword are actually um, null or undefined. This could be a simpler way to do it. Is like more explicit. This is actually how we program in, in real world. But there is a nicer way, which is to use this optional chaining where we use the question mark and then it becomes like this. The slash will only be called if warrior and sword are defined. Then we have null call as an operator. That was also in TypeScript 3.7, also in the ECMAC script standard. And it works like this. It's a very nice way to assign a default 
whenever you have a value that is null or undefined. In this case, we have my x. Uh, because the magic x can be null or undefined, uh, if it is defined, I get magic x. Otherwise, I get a regular x. You want it to be defined because the magic x is so much better. You could use uh, it like this as well. This is more explicit, less explicit, still um, not running the operator. But we can improve on this by using the coalescing. So this gets a little bit more compact like this. So that's magic x uh, can be null. If it is null, then I get the regular x. Otherwise, I get a magic x. So that's how it works. It's like compacting this null check into this. You can combine them. You can often combine them. So in this case, we are getting my sword and then we're taking it for the, from the warrior sword, but only the warrior is defined. If it's not defined, I get a new sword. Um, so that goes for null and defined, and then we have void and never. Void is uh, um, represents when a function doesn't explicitly return anything, so those would be functions that have side effects, and never is a function that never returns. It's also the bottom type of the type system. At the top, we have any, anything can be assigned to any, at the bottom, we have never. Nothing is assignable to never, only never. Now we have uh, generics. Generics is super useful in a type system. So generics lets you apply an algorithm or data structure to any type. They let you create algorithms and data structures that are type agnostic. And this is very 